Alaska shores are a boys club no longer. History has been made at the United States Coast Guard. Clearly, this World War II recruiting video is outdated and out the window. You won't get to be an admiral. But you may be the Admiral's well, Secretary. Now we can be Admirals. Working in the office of the Commandant, that's kind of funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was Admiral Linda Fagan and Lieutenant Kylie Ralph having some fun looking back at what was then while also highlighting what is now. And that's a Coast Guard of inclusion, opportunity for all, and for Admiral Fagan, a chance to make history. President Biden has tapped this decorated sailor as the U.S. Coast Guard's first woman commandant and also becoming the first woman ever to lead a branch of the military. Admiral Fagan joins me now. We so appreciate you being here. Thank you. It is such a <laughs> pleasure to be here with you. Well, most women um, spend years trying trying to break the glass ceiling, climbing the ladder. You've uh, toured through seven continents. <laughs> I, I have. It's been a 37-year journey, actually 41 years in uniform. It, uh, and it has been a journey. I, I reflect on that video and how far we've come as a nation and as a Coast Guard. And uh, I'm just really thrilled for the opportunity to be able to uh, step up and lead the world's best Coast Guard. Why did you even want to go to the Coast Guard Academy? Yeah. You were the minority. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I entered the Coast Guard Academy in 1981. The uh, the first year that women graduated were 1980, but uh, really what drew me was I was living in New England. My parents had bought a boat, and uh, you can't boat in New England without seeing the Coast Guard. I thought I could go to the academy and operate small boats. Uh, that's not something officers get to do, but apparently it's worked out for me. So, <laughs> Well, you've got plenty of times to go out on small boats now. Yes. I, every day is a great day to be on the water is my motto, and uh, anytime I get a chance to be out with the frontline men and women, I, I absolutely seize it. It's uh, We're just... They do great work every day to keep Americans safe. Well, you not only took advantage of the academy and being on the crew team and, and just, you know, absorbing all the academics as well, but, you know, you forged through being the only women in, in a number of areas as you as you worked up. You were an ensign, an ensign rather, on the Polar Star, mm -hmm. Antarctica. What an amazing yeah, place yeah. To, to go to. What was that like, and what do you remember from really trying to hold your ground yeah. and not stand out as being any different from anyone else? Yeah, so a great question. I, I absolutely right. I, I showed up. I wanted to work. I was excited about being a commissioned officer and an ensign in the Coast Guard. Really excited to be on a ship that was going to go to Antarctica in the Arctic. Uh, but when I arrived shortly, the first week, the executive officer pulled me in and said, hey, you know, it's great you're here, but we were going to cancel your orders because I was the only woman uh, to serve on the ship for the two years I was there. Uh, thankfully, that did not happen. It was an incredible foundational opportunity for me. That first commanding officer really set the stage for the kind of uh, growth, professional growth and opportunity that then I've enjoyed for the rest of my time in the Coast Guard. Why do you think that didn't happen? I so. I don't know why it didn't happen. I think it was probably easier to just, I, I had orders, I was there, easier to uh, to continue with the flow. They had had two women on before uh, my arrival, so they had had experience with female crew members, but not with just a single uh, female on board. So why did you keep wanting to serve then? Why did you want to stay in the Coast Guard when you were up against a lot of obstacles? I the Coast Guard provides incredible opportunity, and so as a you know woman in the service, you do have to work a little bit harder uh, to prove yourself and, and your mettle, uh, but the opportunity is there, and it's not held back from you. The Coast Guard, when we integrated women into, into the service, took the decision to not uh, restrict women's assignments, their operational assignments. And so when I graduated from the Coast Guard Academy, I could go to any ship uh, that I, you know, was, uh, that I had the opportunity to go to. And we've managed the service forward that way. And I think that unrestricted opportunity for women has really helped uh, sort of helped us down the journey that we've been on for the you know 40 or so years since uh, certainly since the service academy was uh, integrated by uh, Owen Seiler and uh, in you know a little bit before that with our office of candidate school. Well, that was the admiral that actually became your yeah. mentor. It was interesting. I, I wanted to hear, okay, what woman was really influential yeah. in your life? But actually, it was the the male 
admiral that changed things for women. It was. So Admiral Owen Seiler, he was the 15th Commandant of the Coast Guard. It, it was his decision to integrate the Service Academy, or the Coast Guard Academy. So in 1976, the first class of women show up and they graduate in 80. Had that not happened, I would not have been able to enter the Academy in 81 and, uh, you know, again, had the access to the opportunity that uh, that is the Coast Guard. It's just been an incredible, uh, incredible journey. And I appreciate his courage to, uh, to make that decision and provide that opportunity for women. Oh, a lot of us women feel that way, and I, I love seeing a lot of my friends' daughters now in the academy, hopefully becoming you. Um, but I, 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 some serious questions. You know, when you officially, officially take command, um, you were the former Pacific commander, which included the Bering Straits. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to do this delicate dance of this relationship between the U.S. and Russia mm -hmm. and, and the specific uh, you know, body of water, this maritime relationship. How are you going to do that as this invasion continues on? Yeah, so we will continue doing what we do as a Coast Guard, which is uh, demonstrating professionalism, uh, exhibiting the rule of law, behaving as a professional uh, maritime force would. We do, we're do. we doing that now in the Arctic. We are an Arctic nation, and so Coast Guard cutters are operating now up in the Bering and along the maritime boundary line. We'll continue to engage professionally through the established uh, rules and norms uh, with any uh, Russian vessel that we would encounter in that uh, operation. The uh, There's shared interest there with regard to life saving, and that, uh, that work uh, continues because we uh, uh, you know, any loss of life at sea is one one loss of life too many, and we'll continue to engage in that uh, that critical work as well. I hope we'll be able to talk uh, once you do engage with that, because that clearly is a big story right now. Another big story. Your daughter. I mean, you're already influencing uh, women. You have two daughters, but Lieutenant Eileen, yeah. she's decided to also join the Coast Guard. What do you hope for her? So I, I hope for her that she has the same great access to opportunity that I've had. Uh, that That is happening now and even more. She, she said to me recently, she says, you know, I got asked, why did you join the Coast Guard? Or did you ever reflect on joining as a woman? She said, at that moment, I realized that representation matters because I know a Coast Guard where I've got a mother who's you know serving now as the vice commandant, soon to be commandant, all the way down through the youngest recruit that will graduate from Cape May on Friday. And there are women at every one of those levels of service that, uh, that are serving honorably, have great opportunity, and uh, so she just doesn't know a Coast Guard any different than that. Certainly that was not the Coast Guard I joined, but it is the one we enjoy now. It'll be interesting to watch her career as well. I think she and I both uh, know how incredible uh, our moms are, have been in our lives, and they really do lead the way for us. We look forward to following your career, and I know we'll be talking a lot more. Appreciate right, your time so much, much Admiral. Well, thank you. I'm really excited about the future of the Coast Guard. It's our, the Coast Guard serves the American public, and we're honored to, uh, to do that. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.